Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. First, I wish to express my sincere gratitude to all delegations for placing their confidence in me to lead the 2015 review conference of the parties to the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. I accept the responsibility of the presidency immeasurably strengthened by your support. Together, I am confident we can achieve an outcome uh, worthy of the occasion. It is a great honor to follow in the wake of leaders like Ambassadors Jayantha Donapala and Liron Kabakchilan. Like these men, I intend to serve both as a facilitator for our deliberations and an honest broker of opposing views. My door remains open to anyone who wishes to consult in a constructive and cooperative spirit. I'm in your hands. At this opening session of the 2015 MPT Review Conference, it is appropriate to take a moment to appreciate how remarkably well the treaty has stood the test of time. 45 years after its entry into force, the MPT remains the cornerstone of the global nuclear non-proliferation regime. Uh, when promoted in a comprehensive and balanced manner, its three pillars constitute the foundation for efforts to achieve nuclear disarmament, the essential legal barrier preventing the further spread of nuclear weapons, and the vehicle for promoting the peaceful uses of nuclear energy. Our duty as diplomats is not simply to meet and make new commitments, but to ensure that past commitments are fulfilled. In this regard, the 2015 Review Conference is a critical juncture for the treaty. This occasion provides us the opportunity to take stock of the progress made in implementing the 2010 Action Plan, the first of its kind in the history of the MPT review process. I think it's fair to say that differences of opinion remain over priorities and the pace of progress. Some delegations will be tempted to trim this tree. Others will be inclined to add ornaments so large that the branches will not bear the load. To overcome these differences and to breathe new life into this important initiative, delegations must demonstrate creativity, flexibility, and tenacity. On occasions such as this, I am reminded of the tale of the Irish lads whose journeys were blocked by a stone wall, seemingly too high to scale. Tired though they were, the lads threw their caps over the wall, giving themselves no choice but to follow. For the last seven decades, nuclear weapons have represented a perpetual menace to human security. That we could meet such a challenge appeared unlikely. Yet, through the extraordinary efforts of diplomats such as yourselves, from states both large and small, developed and developing, we managed to create and sustain a treaty that has, without a doubt, strengthened the international peace and security. We must ensure that the treaty continues to serve this noble purpose. The task before us is great. Our goal is to find ways around and through the obstacles ahead, and of course, to avoid creating new obstacles for ourselves. As we prepare to navigate these uncertain waters, I stand here ready and committed uh, to serving you with impartiality, holding our ship's rudder with steady hands. But it is up to you, distinguished delegates, to raise the anchor, hoist the sails, and chart a course toward our shared safe haven, the peace and security of a world without nuclear weapons. I look forward to working with you. Thank you very much. It is now my great pleasure to introduce the first speaker on our speaker's list, the Executive Secretary of the Preparatory Commission uh, for the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty Organization. Dr. Lucina Zerbo, Mr. Executive Secretary, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Your Excellency, Mr. Andrew Brown, President of the NPT Review Conference, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure and an honor to address the 2015 Review Conference of the parties to the Treaty of the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. I would like to start by expressing my sincere congratulations to you, Mr. Andrew Brown, for being elected president of this important meeting. This conference will serve as a test for the international community on whether we can find the collective will to address in a holistic manner the current challenges facing the nuclear non-proliferation regime and make tangible progress on implementation of the NPT. Common ground and mutual interest must prevail over the ideological divides that threaten to undermine the progress that has already been achieved. Although many challenges persist, the international community must not weaken in its resolve to establish the legal 
and technical foundation for verifiable, transparent, and irreversible nuclear disarmament. As recognized at the 2010 NPT Review Conference, the entry into force and universalization of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, CTBT, is a core element of the international nuclear disarmament and non-proliferation regime. And as such, is a critical milestone on the path towards a world free from the dangers of nuclear weapons. To be sure, the NPT and the CTBT are inextricably linked and share a common history. Not only does the preamble on, of the NPT recall the determination set out in the Partial Test Ban Treaty to achieve the discontinuance of nuclear tests for all time. In fact, progress on the nuclear test ban has factored heavily in the NPT review process throughout the years. Such progress, or lack thereof, was often viewed as a barometer of whether the nuclear weapon states were fulfilling their disarmament obligation under Article 4 of the NPT. The compilation of a CTBT no later than the completion of a CTBT not later, no later than 1996 was included as step one of the three-part disarmament action plan during the 1995 NPT review and extension conference and the 2000 NPT review conference underscore the inextricable linkage between the CTBT and the international non-proliferation regime. The practical steps for the systemic, the systematic and progressive effort to implement Article 6 outlined in the final document of the conference included the importance and urgency of signatures and ratification without delay and without condition in order to achieve treaties entry into force. Mr. President, since the treaties opening for signature, we have shared many successes. The treaty enjoys near universal support in the international community, with 183 state signatories and 163 ratifying states. The CTBT is among the most adhered to international arrangement in history. Although still labeled as a preparatory organization, we are anything but preparatory in our work. We are succeeding in our most recent, recent, most urgent imperative, which is to establish confidence and trust in the verification regime. A credible and trustworthy verification regime is absolutely essential to reaching the goal of entering into force and to deter further nuclear testing. We have built up the verification regime to 90% completion, the utility and value of which has been demonstrated not only in the timely detection of the announced nuclear test by the DPRK, but also in the response of the system to the devastating East Japan earthquake, tsunami, and nuclear accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The treaty's verification regime, verification system has proven effective and was further reinforced by the integrated field exercise IFE 14 that took place in Jordan in November 14 by providing, I mean that will take place I guess, you know, but since we <laughs> play here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> strike that from the record. Yeah. <laughs> so strike that from the record. That will take place in November because I'm putting myself in 15 already. <laughs> By providing an adequate assessment of the on-site inspection regime, IFE 14 strengthened confidence in the capabilities of the entire verification system. These achievements have only been possible because of the determination of the international community to making this treaty and its verification regime a reality. At the CTBTO, we have been working diligently on the formidable task of establishing the treaty's verification regime and preparing for the treaty's entry into force. However, as we look forward to the future, we must acknowledge the complexity of the challenges facing the treaty. Although 36 
of the 44 so-called Annex II nuclear capable states that must ratify the CTBT in order to bring it into force have already done so. There still remain eight states whose ratification are outstanding. Mr. President, we should not burden ourselves with negativity and pessimism on the fate of the treaty or the prospect for nuclear disarmament more broadly. But we must also not be naive about the severity of the consequences if we, as an international community, fail to act. A return to an era of a non-restrained nuclear testing is an outcome that we can ill afford and must be avoided if we, if we are to follow the path of peace and prosperity among nations. The global ambition of handing nuclear testing through a legally binding and enforceable non-testing regime is the responsibility of the international community as a whole. And in order to achieve this goal, we must think proactively about additional measures that can be taken. As we set out to do the hard work of forging consensus on this difficult issue, it is of vital importance that opportunities be identified and act upon to make progress towards the entry into force of the CTBT within the, next, within the context of the NPT review process. Just as NPT state parties consider the CTBT a precondition for granting the indefinite extension of the NPT 20 years ago, it will be you, the state parties to the NPT, that will ultimately determine the fate of the CTBT. And while searching for compromises on many of the current challenges facing the NPT, it must also be understood that we should do no harm to the objective of the CTBT. The NPT and the CTBT are mutually reinforcing and an erosion of support for either party will inevitably result in the detriment of both. We owe it to ourselves and to the future generation to create through this forum the necessary condition for increased trust and mutual understanding that will lead us to a world free from the dangers of nuclear weapon. I wish you every success in this important endeavor. I'd like to thank Dr. Lucina Zerbo for uh, his remarks and also for his kind words directed to the chair. Um, at this time, I'm going to suspend the general debate and give the floor to Dr. Bill Potter of the Center for Non-Proliferation Studies. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you.